This is first grade module four, lesson 20. And in this lesson, we're gonna continue what we began in lesson 19, where students are gonna be representing word problems uh, using tape diagrams. And the idea is really the power isn't for this lesson getting the right answer. The real focus of this lesson is helping students read the problem critically multiple times model the question and then look back at the que at the at the resulting model and say is that a model that suggests i should add or is it a model that suggests i su should subtract and you know ultimately in later grades students will be able to draw the same model and using that same model half the kids will add and get the right answer the other half of the kids will subtract and get the right answer and it's really this modeling is a really powerful tool to allow students to understand the question and then get the answer in whatever fashion they want rather than knowing if by reading keywords and using those keywords to subtract or using those keywords to add no nah, we're going to model the question to understand it and then get the answer so let's get started all right, so Rose has 12 soccer, soccer practices this month. Um, six practices are in the afternoon, but the rest are in the morning. Then how many practices will be in the morning? So as I read this, I kind of have, like, I see, I'm thinking about characters. And this, this story problem has two characters. And the two characters are afternoon and morning. And it's a weird way to think of characters. Normally you would say characters. Oh, that's like Mickey Mouse and Goofy or something. But uh, in this case, it's like two things going on. One thing is going on in the afternoon. The other thing is going on in the morning. So I am going to draw my tape diagram. And it doesn't have to be perfectly 50-50, half and half. I just happen to draw it that way. And it says six practices are in the afternoon. So I'm going to label this, you know, like afternoon. And I'm going to just write after. And I'm going to label that six. And then it says, but the rest are in the morning. So I'm going to put morning here. And it doesn't tell us how many that is. So I'm going to put a question mark there especially because it says how many practices will be in the morning. So that's our question, right, that we're being asked. And then so the question is, well, what do we do with the, there, uh, Rose has 12 soccer practices this month. Well, that's the total. That's the whole thing. So we're going to put 12 right here. And so this is uh, one way to show the, um, the tape diagram, how this model would look. And this is the classic model that suggests we're going to subtract. Rose has, uh, whoa, six practices. And it's, show, it's subtraction because you've got the whole thing is 12. Six are in the afternoon, so the rest are in the morning. So that's going to be a 12 minus 6. Now, the reason I say, um, well, it could represent subtraction is because other students may want to think of this as an addition problem with a missing add end. So some students might prefer to think of this as 6 plus what equals 12, in which case they're going to use addition to solve the question, while others are going to think of this as a part, part, whole kind of a thing where you've got 12 minus 6 equals the missing part right here. Now I'm just going to model, I'm going to leave the solution to you as the parents and the teachers. So Ben caught 16 fish. He put some back in the lake. He brought 7 home, uh, of the fish home. So the big question is, how many fish did he put back in the lake? So let's see. Um, we're going to do our model. And it says, he put some back in the lake. OK. 
Okay, well, let's start with the whole thing. Let's start with the whole in this case. So here's my whole entire thing. I'm, I'm going to represent that as the 16 because he caught 16 fish. So there is my total. He put some back in the lake. And we don't know how many he put back in the lake. So I'm going to just cut right here. And I'm going to put the question mark. And I'm going to put lake. Because he put some of those 16 fish back in the lake. But we don't know how many. In fact, it says right here. How many fish did he put back in the lake? So there's my question mark. So I've taken care of this sentence. I've taken care of this sentence. Let's look at this sentence. It says, he brought home seven fish. Now, I don't have that listed here. So I'm going to label that right here. This are the fish that he brought home, and that's a seven. So he brought some he put some in the lake. He brought home seven. So you've got lake and home. The total was 16 right here. And the question is, how many did he put back in the lake right here? So parents and teachers, do you notice how many times I'm going back and forth between reading the question, drawing the picture, reading the question, drawing the picture? This is really what we want our kiddos to do. Um, historically, traditionally, I think students read the question once and feel like they are expected to immediately know the answer. And um, uh, no, that's just not true. You're going to read the question and then read it again. Add a, a little piece to the model. Read the question again. Add more to the model. And it's just a different way of reading that students are unfamiliar with. It's this concept of going back and forth, back and forth, and reading the same sentence over and over. Um, Nuff said, uh, once you've got this, it's a classic way to show that you could either use subtraction or addition to figure out the missing value. Nikhil solved nine problems on the first sprint. He solved 11 problems on the second sprint. How many problems did he solve on the two sprints? All right, so Nikhil solved nine problems on the first sprint. So we can model that, and that's going to look like right here. Nine problems on the first sprint. So if we wanted to, we can even draw in those dots. There's my nine, and so that's his first sprint. He solved 11 sprints on, uh, 11 problems on the second sprint. So I'm going to model that, draw a slightly larger tape, and we'll do one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. So there are our 11. So here is our second sprint. So we've got the first sprint, we've got the second sprint, and it says how many problems did he solve on the two sprints? So the idea is we're going to put them together. I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to show that, okay, a couple of ways we can model this. We can call this first, and label it nine, and then we can call this second, and label it eleven, and then the question is what's the total? And I could label it like that. So this is one way to show the model. It's not the only way to show the model. It's just one way to show the model. And, of course, this is the classic model to show addition. And the last problem, Shanika returned some books to the library. It doesn't say how many. It just says some. Uh, she had 16 books at first. And she still has 13 books left. And then the question is, how many books did she return to the library? So she returned some books to the library, and then she kept some books. So those are our kind of like our two characters, isn't it? Now, she returned some books to the library. We don't know how many she returned, so if we wanted to, we could draw our little thing, and we can call it returned. 
and that's our question mark. So that's saying, hey, we don't know how many she returned. We just know she returned some. And then it says, this is very curious, it says she had 16 books at first. So that's the total. And then it says she still has 13 books left. So if we wanted to, we could kind of skip that blue portion for a second and says this is how many she kept, right? She still has some books left. And I'm going to label that our 13. So we have two pieces. The part that she returned, the part that she kept, um, or she has them left. Um, and then now we can go back and we can say, oh, she had 16 books at first. So that could be this thing right here, 16 at first. So this is the total. And that total is made up of some that she returned and some that she kept. And now that we've modeled it, we can see, oh, the missing value can be found either by addition or subtraction. Typically, we would call this a subtraction tape diagram because we have the whole, we have a part. Now we're going to use subtraction. Although some students might say, I want to think of it as, a, as a, an addition problem with a missing add end. And that's perfectly allowed as well. And that wraps up first grade, module four, lesson 20. Uh, students are continuing using tape diagrams and then recognizing whether that tape diagram suggests subtraction or if it suggests addition.